Hey everyone, I see some folks in there. We're still in our standby screen, just making sure that I've got audio coming through. Hey everyone, it's Kathy Zilski. Welcome back to my YouTube channel and the craft slash dining room. And I am so happy to have you here today. I haven't been live in a while. Just want to see, I'm going to check the comments and see if we can hear me. Can you hear me out there? If so, give me a thumbs up in the comments, which I can see just off screen. I, uh, I had kind of forgotten how to do all this, so I had to kind of go back through and check all the boxes, and I think I'm good. I think I'm live, and I think you can hear me. Thumbs up, coming through. All right, that sounds great. Thanks so much for joining me today and welcome to another installment of 10 minute design chats for crafty people. Now, if you're new, right? If you've never done this before, this little web series is all about tackling one little topic in design. We're just gonna take a little topic, right? We're gonna take a little topic. We're going to look at this principle as it applies to scrapbook pages and cards. Easy peasy, super breezy. This is not meant to be an exhaustive study of design, right? This is, well, I guess you'd call it an amuse bouche of principles of design. So that's what we're doing today. Um, if you are watching live and, and well, if you like what you're seeing, give me a thumbs up. Let's YouTube know that, hey, Kathy knows what she's doing. And that's always good. I can see your comments over on the side here, but here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna pop in and we're gonna start talking about design. I'm actually not even gonna set a timer today and I'll tell you why. The timer just gets in my way and it distracts me. I have what I wanna talk about. I'm going to start with scrapbook pages and move into cards. Then I'm gonna open it up for questions. So if you have questions at the end, I'm gonna say, you guys got questions? And then you'll ask questions and then I can pop, pop some up on the screen and you, you see how that works? Okay. Before we get started though, what, what are you drinking today? What are you drinking out there in, uh, in uh, YouTube land and the internet? Me? I, I do have coffee here, but I was so hyped up that I thought if I don't get some liquid, I'm going to pass out. So, mm, mm. another nectar of the gods. Okay. And I'm seeing that it's okay if it goes a little longer than 10 minutes. So shall we, friends? Shall we jump in? Again, the topic, <laughs> have I even said that? Let's back up. The topic today is contrast. Contrast in design, also called emphasis, also called dominance. The idea behind contrast is to get your attention or to make something look different from something else. That's basically it. And I like to think about contrast as a design convention that creates interest. It creates energy and excitement, if you will. So the, I'm gonna start out in one area, and then we're just gonna kind of move through. All right, does that sound good? All right, friends, it is time to go down to the table, shall we? Oh, and look, I'm still in the circle. I'm gonna stay in the circle because, you know, I mean, here I am. But we're gonna start out in the scrapbook realm, and we are going to start out in an area that scrapbookers, those of you who are out there, and this actually will work too for card makers who like to use die cuts or type. And that is, we're gonna talk about a little bit of type contrast to kick it up, to kick it off. Type contrast. This has always been one of my favorite areas when I'm working on a scrapbook page to think about, and that is my page title, okay? I start out with this little guy here because what I want you to see is what I am talking about when I talk about contrast and type. We have a die cut set up top. I think this is Archie. Yeah, it's Archie. And we have a die cut set at the bottom, which is mm, all caps, all caps number one. The contrast here, you should be able to see pretty clearly, right? You've got this lowercase sans serif or slab serif, forgive me. <laughs> and what slab serif means, these little, little feet, they're just kind of flat and squared off. And you're combining it with an uppercase, all caps, tall and skinny font. Together, these create some contrast, right? These two things, they're not the same. They're not the same. And therein lies the beauty of contrast in type. I'm gonna show you another example, all right? We're moving on. I'm keeping things, keeping things moving along. 
Oh, and I think our light looks really good today too, if I do say so myself. We see the contrast in type again. And this, these are literally the same fonts. Actually, no, these aren't the same fonts. That's the same font, but this is actually a lawn font. Yeah, pretty sure that's lawn font. Small caps, slab serif. Together, I'm going to turn it sideways because I think, I mean, the layout's not sideways, but you see this, right? Contrast. This is different than this. Put together, they create sort of a cool, interesting look for topography. And that is contrast in action. Oh, I do love this page. And yes, the bee costume, this little bad boy. Also, I just want you to know my hair is a lot longer, but the costume, ah, it's a classic. All right, let's bring in another example of contrast, especially where we're referring to type and titles. Let me see if I can straighten that out. Oh, so much better. Oh, thank you. Okay, you see it here, right? We've got two elements of title, this, that, and this giant old ampersand, right? Right in the center. That is definitely something that says, I stand out over that. And together, because they are all connected together, just creates something that's really energetic and interesting. Love that. Now that's type, right? You probably didn't expect me to start there. Where you most frequently see this concept, and I'm, I'm kind of on, can you, can you see there's a theme here? All right, where you most often see it is with the focal point, right? Focal point. We know about this, especially as scrapbookers, because I think since day one, you're kind of told, okay, make your focal point and do all the things that you do. The thing about emphasis and contrast and the thing about focal points, the point of them, <laughs> no pun intended, is to get your attention. Does that make sense? To get your attention and draw it into a particular place on your layout, and then you go from there. Well, obviously we can do this with size. And now, of course, it's become partly cloudy. Oh gosh, hold on guys, there's something I gotta do here. Bear with me, watch this little magic happen. Oh, there we go, okay, all right. That's brighter. We're gonna have to do that a few times because I cannot abide the changing light. Someday I'm gonna have a, well, I'm never gonna have a studio. Who am I kidding? But you see this, right? Big says, look here. Everything else is smaller. And position on a page can also stress emphasis or contrast, especially with the focal point, because we tend to read from top to bottom. You know what I'm saying? Like you, you start at the top of the page and you work your way down. Now the sun's coming back out. All right, there we go. You know, maybe I won't lock it for now. Get those controls out of there. All right, moving on. Let's look at another one. Here's one where the focal point's actually at the bottom. You see, bigger, smaller. And I will show you that, you know, sometimes you just gotta do a story about coffee. Actually, this is pretty old, but here is an example of you have decided that your emphasis is gonna be at the bottom of the page, not the top. And of course, the title is gonna draw you closer to that as well. So a lot of times when we're thinking about creating focal points, we put the focal point next to the title. Now here, <laughs> I got two pages to show you. Oh my goodness, okay. I don't do a lot of two page layouts. Um, I just don't like doing them because it takes too much work. And as you probably have picked out by now, I, I scrapbook in eight and a half by 11. That is just my, that's just my chosen size. There's no better, there's no worse. It's just, it's just the size that I enjoy. But here's an example of contrast in action. Do you see it? I'm gonna take a sip while you, while you answer that question. Mm. All right, big says, look here. Everything else falls to the side. There was, a year, <laughs> there was a time in my life where I was a runner. I started very late in life and it didn't last very long because apparently middle-aged knees don't like running. But big says, look here. Contrast in action. I'm gonna show you another page. I'm not sure why. I think that maybe just when I, <laughs> maybe when I was a runner, apparently, apparently, I did a lot of two page layouts about running. This was actually my very first 5K. I was so nervous. I was so nervous. But another way that we are creating emphasis is through density, right? This is a solid page of photographs, all put together paired with the lighter page that just has the story and the title and, uh, you know, the little doodads. But here, I mean, if I were to switch it over here too, let, let, I don't even know, no, I don't like it like that. But my point in switching them around is that the thing with more density is going to pull your attention. 
Yeah, makes sense. Okay. And I haven't, I, I've got to tell you all, I haven't seen any, I haven't been reading your comments as I'm going because I'm trying to stay on task here. <laughs> and I think you'll appreciate it, you know, after the fact, but, but, but I will be answering your question. Now check this out. This is just a cute little, uh, this a little, uh, what is this called? Mini album. I did this uh, for scrapbooking cards today. Contrast can also be done with color and pattern paper, okay? Here, super cute little gingham, whatever that is. Yeah, I think it's a gingham, right? And then red and stark white, boom. This design just pops. You know what I mean? Just pops. And then if I show you what some of these album pages look like, let's say you turned the page and you were looking in here to see that. Again, a little bit of contrast down here with these numbers. Oh, might as well pull out a few more. This is seriously, I never finished this album in its entirety, but I wanna show you a few more pages from it. Let's see here, can we squeeze in a few more? This is just a favorite um, Christmas memories album. And you can see each page has its little pop of color for some contrast at the bottom. And of course the contrast provided here in the store or in the, with the photos and then the story in the center. Now this is very subtle. This is not super like, oh God. And there's only one photo on each page, but still these elements provide contrast. Yeah? Okay, moving on another page. We have to see if I had set the timer, we would, we would, we would have been done by now. Well, maybe not completely, but I want to talk to you a little bit about one of my how does one say propensity? I, the reason I use so much white in both card making and scrapbooking is because of the contrast. There is so much contrast that comes in white cardstock. That's it. I also love to be able to just easily read my journaling. And I find that if I'm going on white cardstock, right, I just print this out. I print out the cardstock. I actually did some stenciling on here. See those lines? I think that's actually, um, could be a honeybee stencil in three different locations, mind you. So the repetition is working. So that's the other thing. I haven't even been talking about the other aspects of design because we're focusing on contrast, but white bases give a lot of contrast. When I mat the whole page onto green cardstock, we get a nice frame, right, of contrast. And then I can pick up and repeat things in the center. You know, you've got the same cardstock here. I think this is Gina Kate grass green. Contrast with white is very achievable. I'm going to show you another page that is more subtle, but I think it still, I think it still communicates. All right. This is actually from my online class, Design Your Life. So this is one of the layouts that you get to create in that class. Again, here, this pink and this blue and this white, it's all very soft, right? Well, in this regard, your photos with the dark background kind of pop off and give contrast. So you can also have contrast simply by creating something that's very light and soft and quiet, if you will, and then popping on photos that are either matted or darker in tone, and they kind of stand up. Got one more scrapbook page to show you. And I have to be honest with all of you. I, when I pull out these layouts uh, to talk about design, I get really excited about how many different ways they could apply. And that's just it. We could start over from the beginning and I could go in a different direction and I could talk about repetition or I could talk about asymmetry or symmetry. So all of these things are happening together. We're just focusing on contrasts. So this little, this little layout here, okay, I love this. Look at, there's me and the one and only Heidi Swap and Allie Edwards. Oh my goodness, used to travel used to travel and teach in person. And I know you, you might think, Kelly, you're so outgoing. I, I am outgoing, but I'm an actual complete and total introvert. I'm not sweating as profusely as I normally do on lives, but when I'm in person, it's really, it's really hard for me to um, pretend like I'm good at it. Does that make sense? So and that's the story. And you know, there's a lot of times I've been scrapbooking since 2003. And I think my favorite thing to do is tell a long story. And, and I'm going to do a whole thing someday just on journaling formatting because I've had that request as well. But here, the contrast is really, you know, you've got photos here and you've got this here, but this little pop of red, right? That really jumps out. So you can also create contrast through color 
right? Unexpected colors or stick with all black and white and pop in something that really stands out. I made my own little hello, I'm an introvert. Um, and it says here, which means after about five minutes, I'm going to become noticeably uncomfortable. Please don't take it personally. Thank you. Okay. I know, Nan, I, now I'm peeking at the comments. I need, I need a little break. Mm. Here's the thing about introversion. Part of it is where you get your energy. And I get my energy from quiet time and watching Twilight and not talking to anyone. True story. My husband is not here this weekend. He went up to the family's uh, little lake place to take a break after finishing the first part of his master's program. And uh, I wanted to stay here. Okay, are we ready to move on to cards? Because cards, we're going to pivot. We're going to pivot a little bit. So I'm going to get my first card. And I am going to actually, I'm going to bring my camera down. So just look away for a second. Look away. We're coming down, 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 down. Because I don't want to zoom. I like the video quality to be a little bit tighter on our cards. Okay. So now we're going to move into cards and we are going to talk about contrast. I am going to bring on my controls and then I'm going to lock them. Hold on. Because I want to see if I can stop the shift. Okay. When we're closer, you see the shift more. Okay. I got to take a deep breath again. Here we go. Mm. Contrast in card making. Now, one of the things that I'm going to say, which is super obvious, it's super obvious for, for me and for Part of what makes my cards work, I use white cardstock in so many of my projects because white provides the most contrast and that is what I am always looking for. In a simple design, when you have this little wash of color and all that framing white space around it, boom, it just, it just pops, it has energy, it's clean, and you know where to look. Now, I know card, card, uh, canvases, if you will, they're smaller, right? We have less space to work with, but that's okay. That's totally fine. Design rules still apply. Here, I've got this extremely Laura Basson inspired, and you all know Laura, right? Because she's amazing. But this is me channeling my inner Laura Basson anytime I go heavy painted rainbow and popped up whatever. But look at that lovely lucky to know you right in the center, right? It just goes boom, right in your face and you know that design is good to go. Love it. Same thing here. Again, contrast. Well, there's not much, you know, you're not competing with anything here. I don't have to say, where do you think you should look on this card? Because you know, but you see that strong graphic sense with this card, that is all coming from a really heightened sense of contrast with stark white and a very bold center. Now I recently did this video and I also just think this is, I, I really do love this card. Ah, love how it turned out. And um, I just want to point out too that anything that I'm sharing today that has a corresponding video, it will be linked below in the information box that's below the videos on YouTube. And if you're on a phone, there's like this little carrot that points down and I think you can tap on it and it will reveal everything underneath. So I'll, I'll have listed, I think I have most of them listed, but I may have missed some. Of course, I have more uh, card making videos than scrapbooking, but yeah, there you go. Here, our contrast, you know, we've got black, we've got the purple, that, that really stands out. I mean, anytime you have a silhouette on some sort of colored background, it just stands out. It's got pop, it's got zip. It really says, I'm here, get used to me, right? And then again, mounted on the white cardstock, total framing margin space, providing contrast for the whole piece. Again, you see this on almost everything I do because I love that pop. I love how the white frames out anything bold and colorful underneath. I'm gonna bring this little guy in. Um, this little ghost guy, again, Contrast, one, two, three, you pop a white ghost on the center, he's popping out. It's really clean. And I think one of the things that's kind of nice about this, uh, these examples, which are super simple, super simple examples also kind of strip it away. Like there's nothing else for you to look at here, right? I don't have any funky ink blending. I don't have any, you know, magical, I don't even know. I, I mean, I, I struggle with that stuff anyway, but you can see how easily this pops out. It's clean, simple contrast. Mm. Now here's one. <laughs> this is so simple. I love this too, but, but 
but that's contrast in action. You just have one little thing popping up from a card project. And that's something to keep in mind too. I don't think we have to always reach, right, for the next best thing. I think sometimes if we keep it really simple, we can create strong contrast even with something as basic as this. Hmm? Okay, this little guy, got to show you this again. This is, I mean, so what's so great about something like this is, oh, I see my friend Ian popped in. Um, what is so great about something like this is the contrast is built into to the design itself. This is from MFT Stamps, I think. Gosh, they do a good job with topography. Big birthday wishes, okay? So this is a really good example of contrast from top down, right? You've got that visual hierarchy, something big at the top, working its way down. Ah, oh, I still think this is so cute. All right, only a few more things to go here. I have this little card that was completely inspired by my friend Christina Werner, who is an amazing designer, not just of, not just of um, products, because she's an amazing, but she's just such a good graphic designer. Love that I get to work with her now. It's, a, <laughs> it's been awesome, she's so cool. Anywho, again, there's not a lot going on here, but look at this pop of this colorful tail on this space, it just, it really stands out. Now, of course, in card making, another thing that we have is we have, um, we have the ability to pop things up, which also give contrast. And I'm seeing a few uh, questions, and Ian, I'm gonna take questions at the end. Um, different colors for the word big. Oh, I'm, I am gonna come back and answer this. The reason why, it's still, to me, pink. They're just pink. I wanted it to have a little more interest. So this is a rainbow, Ian, going in a light into the rest of the rainbow. I just thought it was interesting. You know, not everything I do has a full rhyme or reason, but there you go. Again, contrast, very, very simple to achieve in a simple car design, right? Look at all this little guy. You know, that beautiful silhouette with the ink blending behind it and a little bit of black that really pops. This has a high contrast value, right? We've got this cream, well, I think this is, this might be Gina K cream cardstock. I'm not sure, I th or maybe it's just white, but you see that strong emphasis and pop? That's contrast in action. I have one more card to share with you, and then we're gonna take some questions. All right, again, contrast. Framing it in white, popping it on a bold yellow, and then having all this colorful stuff with the black going on as well. That's another thing that I think is interesting about contrast, um, which I think you see a lot in card making. Let me see if I have any more here. Um, you see a, a, lot of, a lot of folks using the, you know, black cardstock for sentiment type of deal. And I think what's so great about that is that's because black and white have such strong contrast, but it's also a neutral. Black and white are kind of a neutral. So that's a look at the projects. And now, now we're gonna go back to the, my face. Hi, hi there, we're back. So that was kind of the quick nuts and bolts of contrast. Now I'm gonna take a peek over here because if you do have any questions, I am super happy to answer. In fact, I might even scroll back a little. Um, yeah. Oh, I, I'm looking here. Oh, I'm gonna pop you up for a second, Mindy. How do I do that? Do I do it like that? Oh, and I'm gonna close you out of the way. Uh, Mindy, who is a fantastic designer, I'm gonna get better at leaving white space intentionally. That's a thing too. So we don't always have to fill every space. I, I really stress that with scrapbookers when, when I'm helping people get started. Not that I've done that in a while, but you know, it's okay to have some open space because that will give more opportunity for contrast to really stand out if your space isn't completely full. So there you go, Mindy. I just wanted, I just wanted to pop you up. All right, I'm gonna keep going back down. Um, oh, make a mirror. Okay, Marge, I'm gonna answer this. So. She wants to know what colors I used on this. So that video, I'm 100% sure, is gonna be linked below, uh, below in the information. And then you can click on that video link. It should say Make America Craft again, click on it, and it will list. They are Concord and Ninth. They're the brand new Concord and Ninth inks, and <laughs> they look pretty good, right? Yeah, I'm just gonna say, those are pretty fun inks. So those are the inks that I have, all right? Ooh, on my, how I'm gonna pop you up. Annalise, oh, I think I just popped up Ian. Well, Ian, thank you. 
<laughs> okay, let's keep going. Uh, da, 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 I found you. I'm going to pop you up. Annalisa, on the Halloween card, do you think one could use a black base and still have sufficient contrast? Now, it depends. Are you referring to which one? Because the answer is, yeah, I think so. I mean, because if you're doing something like this little guy, right, this little guy, he's going to have a decent amount of contrast. Um, you don't want to have that black though. I don't think the black would have worked as well. But if you, this pad, this pad that I got all this from has so many cute things. This guy, if you put this on black, the bottom would probably get lost. I'm just going to say, all right. So hopefully that answers your question. Let's keep going. Uh, okay. Do, 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 do. Oh, you know, Christy, I'm going to pop you up because I actually think this is a thing. Um, so I've been making cards now since 2017 and um, I had to learn. <laughs> I've learned. I've learned so much now that I actually feel like I actually know something. Does that make sense? Um, I don't have any videos about that and it, dye oxide, etc. but I'm going to point you in a direction. Jennifer McGuire Inc. She has great videos on the difference between dye inks and oxide. Like she, she covers everything. And that's who I learned everything I know about inks from. Like I wouldn't have been able to tell you, well, an oxide ink has a property, but blah, 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 blah. No. Uh, Christy, check out Jennifer McGuire Inc. Um, very easy to find either on YouTube or on her blog. And she has a great search. And if you just type in um, ink comparison, you will get articles that pop up because that woman has been kicking it old school with information for years. So, all right, let's see what else we've got going. Okay. Oh, yeah, Annalise, the vampire card. Yeah, I think on that vampire card, it just, you know, you would have had contrast. Let's get right in there. I could go back to that. Well, let's put it by my face. Then, then the light will be fine. See that there? There we go. Um, I just think this black might get lost with the black, but that would be a whole look in and of itself. And actually you'd still have the contrast with the purple and you still have the contrast with the tree. So, all right. Well, again, I am also going to make sure to link, uh, to the playlist, a playlist of 10 minute design chats. You know, they're, they're getting better. Well, are they getting better? The first ones I had some audio issues. We're getting a little better, but what I would like to do is this. Let me get some of my, all right, I'm gonna turn something on here. Okay, now here's my challenge to you. If you take anything that you learn from this video, right, and you think, I'm gonna try to have contrast, um, then tag me on social media with hashtag CZ Design Chat, especially Instagram. If you do that on Instagram, I check that hashtag and I can see what you're making. It's kind of cool to see. But I do see another question um from oh yeah simon hurley also has good uh good tips on ink that kid that kid's going places eh? um what type of ink do i use to oh i'm gonna pop this one up real quick too and i'm gonna get my design chat up there uh renee asks what type of ink to use with uh, stamping and coloring with a marker i would use uh simon intense black or memento tuxedo black or Gina K Amalgam ink. Um, all three of those will work with coloring, especially alcohol markers. That's what I'm mostly referring to, the things over my shoulder there. Um, you just want an ink that's not gonna smear and those will do it. I've been kind of hooked on Simon Intense Black lately because I had no idea what a great ink it was. So, uh, Christine, uh, you know, I, I said, okay, what do I mean I don't always have a plan or design plan? Hmm, now I don't know what I said. You know, do you mean like when I'm actually creating cards or just in, just in general in my life? Let me know. Let me know. I'll pop it back up. Um, yes, yes, yes. Great. Hey guys, this is also great. Um, anywho, I, now I'm, now I'm rambling. That's a sign that we're probably supposed to be done. So with that, mm, I appreciate you joining. Here's a question for you too. Um, tell me in the comments below if you're watching and if you're catching this on replay as well. Tell me what, number one, did you have an aha moment in this video? Great, let me know. If not, tell me what challenges you face in designing either scrapbook pages or cards because 
I love to know what people want to know because then it gives me stuff to ruminate on and then I'm ready to go because again, I haven't done a live in a while and I really enjoy talking about design and again, like I said, I could rewind it all and we could go in a different direction using all the same things and I would still have some things to say in cards. Uh, okay, sorry, I do have to answer this. Christine, in cards. Um, true story, I have a notebook. I'm not going to show it to you because it has, it has a questionable word on the front, but I have started trying to sketch more and to make a plan. Um, I have this series now that I've been doing on YouTube called New Stamps. Now what? And the reason I wanted to do it was to challenge myself to take something that I had not used before and share my process with you. Because I'm getting more confident uh, as a card maker, I am now able to kind of make something and film it as I go. And you know, if it turns into a hot mess, so be it. If it doesn't turn into a hot mess, even better. But Christ Christine, I'm getting better at knowing where I'm going. I don't know. Does that answer your question? Okay. Anyway, um, I'm going to check through a few more. Uh, how long? Okay, here, here's a good one. How long does it take before I say to myself, okay, I'm ready to make the card? So a lot of times, Terry, I just jump in and do it. And But here's the thing. If I'm uh, nine out of ten times, I have made my card before I film a video. Same thing. Well, not so much with the scrapbook page. If I'm doing a scrapbooking video, I have a pretty good idea where I'm going. But that's because I... I know scrapbooking design like that. Like I don't, I never second guess anything on a scrapbook page. And I almost never make hot messes in scrapbooking, but I have a very basic formula, right? I think you can tell by the pages that I make. There's not a lot of craziness going on there. Um, but with cards, I'm, I'm getting... I'm getting so much more confident, but I filmed something today that I'm sharing next week that I am so excited about. And it, it's all about Stamp Timber, which is coming in September. And I decided just to film the entire process that I, that I created these cards and they turned out great. And I, I'm getting more confident to be able to do that instead of make something first and then go back and film it for my YouTube channel. So I'm learning, getting better all the time. All right. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm glad. Oh, Lee says, oh, the contrast of type was too subtle. Um, the contrast, oh, go Kevin. Yeah, you know, I mean, and the thing is too, here's the thing. I know it can be really helpful for people to have really, really strong samples. Some of my type and scrapbook stuff is going to be a little more subtle, um, but hopefully it will give you an idea and things that you can play with. Long story short, look for things that might look a little different next to each other, whether it's through color, right? We're gonna, we're gonna make something pop, right? By having a white and a bold, or we're going to stick something in the center of a layout, right? That is gonna just really just jump out, right? That's gonna jump out. Contrast is all about making a statement, making you look here and making something a little different. And now my microphone is falling. So with that said, I want to thank all of you for joining me today. Again, if I look at the time, yeah, 33 minutes. Yeah, it's going to happen. No timer needed. But I really do appreciate you being here. And if you're not a subscriber, I would love to have you subscribe to my channel. And if you did get value out of this video, thumbs up. Thumbs up would be great because then it, I mean, it's, it's moderately better than thumbs down. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. It's so much better. All right. And with that, I want to thank you so much for being here today. And I will catch you back here again, hopefully soon, with another installment of 10-Minute Design Chat for Crafty People. Thanks, everyone. Have a great day.